Right now, as you watch this, something unprecedented is happening across the planet. And it has nothing to do with new AI models or breakthrough algorithms. Farmland in the American heartland is being cleared at record speed. Suburbs across Europe and Asia are being rezoned overnight. Massive construction projects are rising from empty fields, and they're unlike anything we've built before. These are AI data centers, and they're not just big, they're exponentially bigger than anything that came before them. Each new facility dwarfs the last, demanding power on a scale that would make city planners nervous. We're talking about single buildings that consume as much electricity as entire metropolitan areas. But here's what almost nobody is talking about. The AI revolution is running into hard physical limits, not a software wall, not an algorithm wall, a physical wall made of heat, energy, and the fundamental laws of physics. For the first time at this scale in computing, the limiting factor isn't how smart we can make the software. It's whether we can physically build systems fast enough to keep up with demand without melting the infrastructure that powers them. The next decade of AI won't be won by whoever trains the biggest model. It will be won by whoever solves three critical engineering problems that most people have never heard of. And the solution involves replacing one of the oldest technologies in computing with something that uses photons instead of electrons. This is the story of how AI is forcing us to rethink how data centers move information internally. To understand what's really happening, you need to know that AI data centers are fundamentally different from everything that came before them. Traditional cloud data centers were designed like massive libraries, millions of independent users making separate requests. Your email here, someone's Netflix stream there, a database query somewhere else. Each task isolated, independent. Manageable.ai changed everything. When you train or run a large AI model, you're not making isolated requests anymore. You're creating a single massive computational organism. Tens of thousands of processors must work on the exact same problem simultaneously, constantly exchanging information, synchronizing their results in real time. What used to be a warehouse full of independent computers is now, functionally, a single distributed machine the size of a football field. And here's where the rules break. At this scale, performance no longer depends on how fast individual chips are. It depends on how efficiently the entire cluster can operate as one unified system. Think about it like an orchestra. It doesn't matter if you have the world's best violinist if the rest of the orchestra can't stay synchronized. One delayed note, and the entire performance falls apart. In AI data centers, that synchronization happens billions of times per second. And any delay, any bottleneck, any inefficiency in how data moves between processors directly limits how much useful work the entire system can deliver. The network connecting these chips isn't just infrastructure anymore. It's part of the computation itself. And this is where things get expensive, catastrophically expensive. Because when you're building these systems at the scale AI now requires, you run face first into two problems that most tech companies have spent decades ignoring, energy and heat. Let me show you exactly how bad this is getting. Next generation AI campuses are being planned right now with power requirements measured in gigawatts. To put that in perspective, a gigawatt is roughly the output of a large nuclear power plant. We're building single AI facilities that consume as much electricity as cities of a million people. Industry reports from groups like the International Energy Agency and the Uptime Institute already show data center electricity demand rising faster than most grid expansions. But supplying the power is only half the problem. Once electricity enters these buildings, a significant portion converts directly into heat. And that heat must be removed continuously, not efficiently, not eventually, but immediately, or the entire system shuts down. Modern AI facilities now dedicate cooling infrastructure, 
chillers, pumps, heat exchangers, sophisticated airflow management systems that can consume a large fraction of total facility power, depending on design, climate, and workload. Read that again. In some facilities, moving heat away from the chips uses a substantial portion of the total energy budget. This creates a vicious cycle. Push the GPUs harder. They generate more heat. Remove that heat. You need more cooling. More cooling requires more power. More power generates more heat. The system compounds on itself. At this point, the challenge isn't building faster chips. Engineers can do that. The challenge is whether the surrounding infrastructure can physically support them without catching fire or bankrupting the operator with energy costs. And here's the part that should concern every AI company CEO. Adding more compute doesn't scale linearly anymore. Every additional watt of processing power increases the burden on power delivery and thermal management making each incremental improvement more expensive than the last, that we're approaching a regime where adding GPUs delivers diminishing returns without better interconnects. But even if you could solve the energy problem, even if you had unlimited clean power and perfect cooling, you'd still hit the real wall, the one that's been hiding in plain sight this entire time. And it's not about the chips at all. At extreme scale. The most serious limitation isn't the speed of the processors. It's the cost of moving data between them. Modern AI workloads require constant communication. Gradients, activations, parameters, synchronization signals. Massive volumes of information must flow between thousands of accelerators in real time. As clusters grow, the volume of this traffic grows rapidly, scaling faster than compute efficiency and even small delays begin to compound catastrophically. Here's the paradox that's driving engineers crazy. You can add more GPUs to your system, but you don't always get faster results because the network can't keep them fed with data efficiently enough. Large portions of incredibly expensive compute hardware end up waiting idle, stalled by congestion that's happening outside the chip entirely. Imagine buying a Formula One race car and then only being able to drive it through a school zone. That's what's happening to billions of dollars of AI hardware right now. In this regime, the interconnect stops being passive infrastructure and becomes an active performance limiter. The system's overall speed is no longer defined by how fast any processor can compute, but by how quickly information can move across the entire machine. This shift is what makes networking the new frontier of AI infrastructure. The next wave of innovation isn't about making chips do more arithmetic. It's about getting data to those chips fast enough that they're not wasting time waiting. And that brings us to the technology that's powered every data center for the last 40 years and why it's finally running out of margin. Copper has been the invisible workhorse of the digital revolution. Cheap, reliable, easy to manufacture at scale, but it's about to become one of the most expensive bottlenecks in AI infrastructure. Here's why. For decades, copper carried electrical signals reliably across circuit boards, racks, and entire data centers. It became the default medium for almost every internal connection because it worked and it was cheap. But as data rates climb into the tens and hundreds of gigabits per second, Copper begins to face fundamental limitations that can't be easily engineered around. Signal integrity degrades rapidly with distance. Push speeds higher, losses increase. Signals weaken faster. Engineers are forced to shorten cable lengths and pack systems more tightly together, which makes cooling harder and increases heat density. To compensate, Systems rely on equalizers, amplifiers, and retimers, additional components that consume power and generate even more heat just to keep signals alive over short distances. What was once an efficient solution has become an energy tax. Every extra centimeter of copper costs more power than the last. Copper isn't obsolete yet, but it's losing the headroom needed for the next generation of AI systems. 
and that shrinking margin is now one of the biggest pain points in large-scale infrastructure. When engineers look for alternatives, there's only one medium with enough remaining headroom – light. Optical communication follows fundamentally different physics than electrical signaling. Photons don't suffer resistive losses as they travel. Increasing data rates doesn't inherently translate into proportional increases in heat. This makes optics uniquely suited for moving massive amounts of information efficiently over distance. The irony? Optics is already everywhere in modern infrastructure. Optical links form the backbone of the internet. They're used to connect racks and rows inside data centers. Long-haul communication is almost entirely optical. Optics is everywhere except where the data originates and terminates, right next to the compute itself. Even in the most advanced AI systems, there's still a short electrical path between the processor and the optical network. That final electrical hop, sometimes just a few centimeters, concentrates power loss, latency, and heat into an incredibly small space. At large scale, those few centimeters become critically important. Multiply that inefficiency across thousands of connections, and it turns into a system-wide bottleneck. Solving this isn't about replacing electronics with optics everywhere. It's about extending light as close to computation as physics will allow. And for more than a decade, that seemed impossible. Those final few centimeters between the processor and the optical network? They turn out to be the hardest problem in all of modern computing. Here's why nobody could solve it. Until now. Bringing optics closer to the chip sounds straightforward in theory. In practice, it collides with some of the most unforgiving conditions in computing. High-performance AI processors operate under extreme thermal stress. Temperatures swing rapidly as workloads ramp up and down. Photonic components, on the other hand, are often sensitive to even small temperature changes, which shift their behavior and degrade signal quality. Zero this mismatch is why, for over a decade, optics remain safely separated from the hottest parts of the system. Engineers tried repeatedly to solve this with classical photonic devices. Some optical modulators were fast and stable, but physically too large to sit next to dense logic. Others were compact enough, but extremely temperature sensitive, drifting out of alignment with minor thermal fluctuations. In laboratory settings, many approaches worked beautifully, but once exposed to real operating conditions, rapid temperature swings, high power density, long-term reliability requirements, they struggled to scale. This history is why many engineers remained skeptical that optics could ever move all the way to the chip. It wasn't a lack of clever designs. It was a fundamental mismatch between existing photonic technologies and the brutal conditions of modern AI hardware. What changed wasn't a new circuit design or smarter architecture. It was a breakthrough in material science. Silicon is exceptionally good at switching electrical signals, but it's fundamentally poor at generating light. When silicon tries to emit photons, most of the energy is lost as heat instead. That limitation forced traditional photonics to rely on external light sources, keeping optics physically separated from compute. The breakthrough came from learning how to integrate light-emitting materials directly onto silicon without destroying either one. Materials like gallium-based compounds produce light efficiently, but their crystal structures don't naturally align with silicon, leading to defects and reliability failures. What changed was the development of fabrication techniques that could confine and control these defects at microscopic scales. By carefully shaping how these materials are grown and bonded, researchers found ways to keep imperfections from spreading. This made it possible for the first time, to place efficient light sources directly where AI systems need them most, inside advanced packages, right next to compute. This doesn't eliminate all challenges. 
Encoding data onto light efficiently requires optical modulators that are small, fast, stable across temperature swings and low power, all simultaneously. Traditional silicon-based modulators struggle at these extremes. But the path is now clear. Multiple competing approaches are emerging. Co-packaged optics, fully integrated photonic engines, optical interposers. Each makes different trade-offs, and no universal solution has emerged yet. What matters is the shared direction. Scaling AI further requires collapsing the distance between compute and optics. Every technological gold rush follows the same pattern. The biggest winners aren't the ones chasing the final product. They're the ones supplying the critical tools everyone else depends on. AI is entering that phase now. As compute becomes commoditized and power limited, the real leverage shifts to companies that control bandwidth, interconnects, and data movement. These components determine how efficiently massive clusters scale, how much energy they consume, and ultimately how much usable performance operators get from billion-dollar facilities. Networking is no longer a supporting layer. It's the economic choke point. Whoever solves high bandwidth, low power communication at scale effectively controls the pace and cost of future AI expansion. Light doesn't replace silicon, it extends it, allowing computation to expand beyond the constraints that once defined it. The next phase of AI scaling is likely to be decided not by who builds the fastest processor, but by who enables the fastest collective computation across entire data centers. And in that future, optics isn't peripheral technology. It's the backbone that determines how far AI can ultimately go.